Hey, it's Luke. Today we're doing a tutorial on synthesizers. I'm gonna be doing this on Serum, but these things should work on pretty well any synth that you use, whether it's a plugin or hardware. I'll try not to talk too fast or skip anything, but if I do and you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do another video answering all of those. So when I started out with synths, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just playing around with any of the knobs and I was actually coming up with interesting sounds. But over the years, I've been thinking it would have been nice to have just that bass to understand how to get the sound I'm looking for. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to start this from scratch and we're not going to go into anything too, too fancy, but we're going to make three interesting sounds today. The first is a pluck and the second one is going to be a lead synth, make it sound big and big and fancy as much as we can <laughs> and the third one will be a pad so between those three you'll have a starting point for uh, making sounds on your own so we're starting here if you have a preset loaded or anything loaded in here you can just go to the menu and go to initialize preset here you're back to zero so that's what we have with the plugin just initialized from scratch there's nothing nothing going on so this is where we're going to start here is the oscillators the oscillator is probably the most important part in the synth because it's what actually makes sound. This one has the two main ones. It's got one for the subharmonics, so it, you can basically add a third one to get some, some deeper sounds um, and uh, the noise. So we're gonna skip these and just go with these, these two or even in this case, we might even just look at, at this one here. So this is the sound we have. A lot of synths will make it really, really easy to go and you can choose between different, actually, I'll, I'll load this here because Serum does it a little bit differently. So you might have noticed these here, um, these different shapes. A lot of the synths will have this one, the sine wave, and then you'll have a square wave. Let's see if I can, there we go. This is a square wave here, the sine wave here. You might have a few different ones. It doesn't matter what they're called. Um, what we're gonna look at is, we'll just start with the sine wave. This is the most basic oscillator sound you'll get on a synth. So you'll notice how it changed already. We've got this and, and a nice deep sound when you go to the lower notes here. So what we're gonna do is just playing this, what we had, and you can add a second one here. This is a little bit too harsh. What we're gonna do is we'll go into the basic shapes. We'll actually do the same the same sound, um, but you don't wanna have have them competing with each other and have any sort of phasing. So we'll, we'll just, this is the fine tuning. So we're just basically moving it a little bit off. You can't really tell much of a difference here, but where we'll notice a difference is if we do this, we bring it down a whole octave. So you've got the two at once. That's the first one. And then this is the level for that second one. So if we blend in just a little bit of the lower one, and what we're gonna do here is do a little bit of, just a little bit of unison. So this is just adding a few different ones. And this is how much they're detuned. So how far away they are from, you don't wanna go too far with this and you don't wanna go too high with this. Cause if you go, if you bring this up too high, if you go too far it just sounds not good so um a lot of the time you can get away with like seven here or whatever okay so we've got a little bit more of a a little bit more of a, a sound going and that's where we can go to the effects here so if we go and just make it easy we'll just add a delay because we'll be able to notice that right away so I just have short notes, but what happens if I press this, if I press down a note for a while, it will, it'll, it'll keep going. So now that we have the sound, this is the sound we're, we're looking at for now. Over here is where um, we're dealing with the ADSR settings. So there's the attack, the decay, the sustain release. So the attack is the, the start of the sound. So if you bring that up, see where it doesn't have that, it doesn't hit it once anymore. It's really slow going in. We'll actually need this for the pads later on, <laughs> but we'll leave this all the way down for a pluck. We want it to be plucky. So we've got that. But what we want to do is 
And then, okay, so we'll do that one. Then the decay sustain is what we're going to look at in a, in a minute. And then the release is once you let let go of the key. See, I let go. That's too long. With the pluck, we want it to end pretty well right away. Again, we'll use this for the pad. That's where this will be really, really useful. But So we want to bring the release down. And the decay and sustain is where, especially for a pluck, we don't really need any sustain because we just want it to be a quick, quick no maybe a little bit here but might add a little bit see now we've got the that sound going so you can go back between the oscillator here the envelopes here the envelope in this case is where we're dealing with the actual volume in the sound So if we go back to the effects setting, you can do a whole bunch of stuff to the sound. You can add distortion. You can add a compressor. You can add reverb. Do whatever you need to, to do. But anyways, that's how you get the pluck sound. And really, if you have this kind of look to your envelope, chances are it'll sound pretty plucky. <laughs> So the second one we're gonna look at is a lead synth. So I put in some chords here, which are just, don't sound very good yet, because again, we're on the, the that initial preset, right? So it doesn't sound like much. So what we'll wanna do here is look a little bit more at what we looked at earlier with the unison, and the different oscillators, we want this to be big and massive. I like using a sawtooth on here. Uh, we could use a square. You could just go through, you can tell the differences. See, this is what uh, what we're looking at. We want, these aren't too bad. And like I said, it's a little bit different on Serum where you can choose your different, your different shapes. And uh, so you don't actually have one where you can go and just choose a sine wave. It's under basic shapes. Or you can choose one of these if we wanted the saw rounded. We're going to go with the basic shapes because that's something that you will have in pretty well any synth. So let's just, we'll just use this one. It's already sounding a little tiny bit better, but we've got some work to do. So this is where we're going to do seven on here. There we go. Now you're noticing there's a difference. I find them a little too far away, one from the other. Okay, so we're putting the detune close enough. Then we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier. So we're gonna choose the basic shapes again and just choose the same same shape here. And what this is doing here, uh, the position here, is if you click on here, you can tell the different. So if you had something that was a little bit more complicated here, um, you're basically moving through these shapes. I know this is getting a little bit complicated, so I won't go into this too much, but you can tell that is that is that slice here, um, a, that exact slice just from a different view. Um, yeah, I probably shouldn't even put that, that part in the video because I'm just complicating it. Anyways, we go back to basic shapes and uh, we'll go choose the same one here that we had for the other one. And there we go. Uh, we're gonna do an octave down. And I always do the tuning a little bit off. We can go up or down or just. So now it's sounding. This is just the one. Now we've got it. So that's the, this first part here. The sub in this case is a good idea to do. Uh, and you can see your shapes here. And this, these are the shapes that you might see on another synth that you'd have. Um, so you can go, you've got the, the sign here and the square ones here at the end. We might do the square for the lower and then we're gonna do an octave, two octaves down because this one here, when we're hitting a note here, because this one is just playing the normal note, this one here is playing an octave down. So I'm not sure if you can see on, <laughs> on push, but this, this second oscillator is basically playing the same note but it's the same as if you were playing the same note on a piano, just one octave from each other. And then on the sub, we're gonna do one even lower. This direct out is always a good idea if you're doing the sub, because this just means it's not getting sent to the filters if you're doing other stuff with it. It just keeps it more 
raw on its own and it just it'll sound it'll just sound better most of the time you can give it a try and see what sounds better with the sound you're making but a lot of the time you'll go direct out there so because of these three oscillators we're actually playing one note but it's playing it's the same as if we were we were playing three different notes on a piano so we're actually going to add the noise as well and this one you can choose just choose something actually no we won't do kick but so to tell that noise coming through when we bring the level up and I can hear it on its own so all it's doing is this but it's, it's just adding a little bit to the sound so um so you might not notice it on its own you might notice it if you have some headphones on Okay, so we've got that, that sound. Uh, what we're looking for here is maybe a little bit of the release. We don't have to deal with the, uh, the decay and the sustain in this case because we want them to be on. And um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, deal, we'll give it just a little bit of release where that's too much. It's just starting to sound like something. I've just noticed that it might be a little bit too much once we hit the chords. So let's hit play here. I hope it's not too loud. Ooh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we'll bring the master down here. So we're playing too many notes for this specific sound, but I really do like this sound. So what we're gonna do is maybe reduce a little bit of the unison. So we've got too much going on. So that's where we have to decide. Do we get rid of the sub? Yeah, probably. Or we can reduce the level on the sub. This gives it, uh, it fills it a little bit, but it's just not, not too much. So, so now you probably remember where we're going next. So we've got the sound right. We want to go look at the effects. And this is where, in this case, we're going to go a little bit extreme. We've got the hyper dimension here, which just adds, we can add, it'll add some unison. It'll, we can just, just make the sound bigger. Okay. And we want a little bit of distortion in here, possibly. No, I don't like that. This, the sound, there's too much going on in this. Scene. Okay, we're just going to leave the sub out. want some delay and some reverb I might do some EQ as well just to get rid of the lows because really matter what you're using it's just making doing stuff to your sound of course it's not sounding good might even be able to add a little bit of unison here So basically that's what we're looking at. Uh, we can make it sound a whole lot better, but it's just, it's your, your starting point to get this sound. I'm wondering if, 
was just wondering if it was better without the noise. It's just a starting point to be able to get some sounds out of it. And then you can play around with the other stuff, like the filters and whatever. There's a section here uh, that I always like working on to, to get some really nice sounds out of it. So it's a portamento basically glide between the sounds. It'll just sound nice when you're transitioning from one note to another. So um, it's always nice to play around with that and see if you can, you can get some nice sounds of it. All right, sound number three is gonna be a pad. So we're gonna go to the other one that I initialized. And we'll stop this one here. And again, it doesn't sound very good because we're just playing chords with that initial preset. So for a pad, we are going to play around, like I said earlier, with the attack and the release. And we can bring these as high as we want. Let's just do So let's just do a We don't want a square one. Okay, this one we're getting somewhere. So these are the, the chords that I had earlier. We're actually gonna take the master down here. So already you're noticing that sort of pad feel to it. And what we'll do is have a second one here uh, with the same, we're gonna do the same shape But what we're gonna do this one, with this one is we're gonna go up one octave this time. And we're gonna bring this one down. Just, just adding a little tiny bit. All right, so we've got a little bit of a, a sound going. And uh, we won't need the sub for this one or the noise. If we go to the effects, what we would want might be some delay, but we'll just add some heavy reverb. And uh, let's just. All right, we've got a sound going now. We're gonna go back to the oscillator. This is a section we haven't looked at yet, is the filter. So this is where it's sort of nice to play around with the filters and have the sound just going up and down. And uh, I wasn't planning on bringing filters into this, <laughs> but uh, it, they'll, they'll be so useful when you're dealing with synths that we really should look at this thing. So um, what we're gonna do here is, you see this here, which is the LFO. Uh, the LFO is basically, you can use it as a modulator. You can use it to do stuff to other sounds. So if you have a sound, even the pumping effect in uh, in house music a lot of the time where it, where it's like jumping up and down, jumping up and down. So there's the kick and then it's going wah, wah, wah. So you can use an LFO with that on your actual levels. But in this case, uh, we're gonna use it with a filter. So what we're gonna do is this LFO, we'll just leave it as it is. This is the shape of it. So basically it's going up and down which is perfect for for uh, for a pad. And so we take it and we just drag it here to the cutoff. And basically the cutoff on its own you can sort of tell the LFO here. If we get rid of the LFO on here, we'll just bypass it for now. This is what the cutoff would do if we do it just manually. And you'll notice that we, this here is A this is oscillator A, this is B, and I'm not sure why this box isn't going away, okay. And then this, the N, is the noise here, and the S is a sub. In this case, these we don't need. So the difference here is if we have a note playing with A and B, 
you can tell it's the filter is affecting it. It's opening it up and closing it up as we go up and down. But if we do it just on one of them, you'll notice. So this one's opening up this main one, but that higher note that we have, this oscillator here, is always going. So it's sort of nice. You can you can do the LFO um, on this for both, or you can just have it affect one of them. So we're going to have it affect one just because we don't want the whole thing to be going up and down. We just want this little variation uh, throughout the sound. All right, so we'll remove the bypass on this LFO. And you can tell that sound where it's moving way too quickly for a pad. And this is where you'll want to adjust the speed here. So you can tell the speed going through right above. This is starting to be a really nice sound. I should probably save this. But anyway, so we can go to the effects here and all we've got now is a reverb and we might not even need that much else on here. And sometimes add a little bit of delay if we make it really slow. And this way we can play around with just any notes you're hitting. It's just a high note or a low note. You make so many sounds from this and this was really easy to make. It took us only a few few minutes and uh, there's so much we can do with it. So there are so many more advanced things that we can do, but this is basically the very beginning of what you can do with a synth. And once you've done this, you can start to recognize the same things in other synths that you use. So it makes it really easy to go through and, uh, you know, make some sounds and get and get started once you, you have an idea of how to get the initial sound in. Anyways, I hope this can help you out. I hope you can make some interesting sounds. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.